Welcome to A Woman's Brew, where women talk about beer. In this mini-sode, we're going to be looking at Siren's award-winning Broken Dream and its different variants. I'm Joanne and this is Tori. YOLO! And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us! Oh, I just did that without reading I was, it. I, First like, time I ever. didn't really bother writing it. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Uh, it's the first time I've just like reeled it off. I think we do. We both did too many it. times. <laughs> we, we both, you've nailed the intro, but yeah. we've both blown it in the fact that we didn't read it. We were just like, should we do this? Cool. Let's just, let's just do <laughs> it. I didn't write anything up. It. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> we're just doing it. Yeah. Because this one's like, this is, we're freestyling. We're ad libbing. Chit chat. Yeah. Chit chat. Yeah, We're going to drink a beer. We're going to have a chit chat. We have got a few different versions of Siren's Broken Dream. But you can't have those versions without having the original to the compare OG. with. <laughs> like the kids OG. say. Like Award winning. <laughs> We're done with the kids. This is brilliant. <laughs> the OG Award winning. I think it was 2018, if I remember correctly. You- um, do you want to know when I first had this? When did you first I went and it? looked. Right, so I had a look. I had this back in 2014. Um, June 10th, 2014 is when I checked it in on Untapped, in fact. Um, it was in a bottle. Oh. And, yeah, it was in a bottle. And this is my review of it. I gave it five out of five. Brilliant. I was very happy with it. I mean, this is stout. Award winning. Right, <laughs> award winning. Jo- Joanne Joanne's award winning, award winning. <laughs> indeed. I, I awarded it five, five stars. Five stars. Um, and I said, I do love a breakfast stout. Roasty, chocolate and coffee with an alcohol warmth. Delicious. I would have liked it if you just said, I do like a breakfast breakfast out full stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was I your mean, review. 2014. Five out of five stars. My, my, my beer reviews were not as in-depth as they are nowadays. A, that was, that um, was quite if you're detailed. On, if you're on the video... Here is my picture of it. Also, not as good. Yeah, those. It's in, it's in my in my parents' kitchen because that's where I was living at the time. <laughs> um, I like their old labels because the way yeah, like that you had ones. the sirens on the. the I've labels. got it in a shaker pint glass. Terrible. <laughs> We need to do a whole episode of like really bad. We need to do a whole episode where we go back through like the worst shit. That's got a terrible fit on on top. A really bad filter on the picture as well. (laughs) We need to go through like our embarrassing histories a bit because I like I know for a fact that like I've got to be like Guinness at the Shannon Airport (laughs) four out of five stars because I was like it's fresh Guinness. It's like it's really great. I mean, what that's what you felt at the time, and that it is what I felt at the time because it was about two a.m. I was on a layover waiting to go to the US in this tiny, tiny little airport. And there was this tiny bar that I didn't even think was open. And it was. And I was like, I'm going to get a Guinness because apparently you need to have a Guinness in Ireland or it doesn't count. And that's meant to be even better over there. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. I bet it's not even re- Like, I bet it's just as good as in a can. And then I had it. And I was like, no, it's actually really good. Yeah, <laughs> see, even in the airport, it's better. <laughs> honestly so yeah we need to have like an episode where we just reveal that could be our clickbait episode yeah but i share like our embarrassing truth i shared this uh i shared this on my um instagram on love bill learnings instagram the other day because i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing um motivational quotes related to beer we're gonna have motivational sundays although it didn't post on sunday it posted on monday morning but that's motivational fine. monday mornings uh, motivational <laughs> that's monday mornings. Probably better motivational yeah mondays. yeah and uh, so i put that out and i put out like one of my first ever beer reviews which was for the beer that we keep talking about with um craft beer pinup with kimberly the um blueberry wheat ale from <laughs> from uh, sea dog in maine and um, it was just like really fruity delicious i mean it was a good beer i mean yeah i mean it's a brilliant beer it was delicious <laughs> but this is you know and now look at me i'm like it's hop forward and it's this and it's that you know and like you it doesn't matter if that's if you just think it's delicious just put that down to be and if to you want to but if you want to build up that's cool too <laughs> be fair i always do like half the time i can't be bothered to write like a full description because it's like if i'm out with friends or something like that and i'm like oh this is really good like it's good enough that i'm motivated to write something more yeah. than just like, like yeah like, i'm like i want to just do more than give it four or five stars i need yeah. to like say something that that i'm really like loving about this beer 
but I'm like, oh, but I'm out of friends. I really can't be bothered to sit here and type. And then I keep making typos on this phone. So I'm yeah. like, I just can't be bothered. So I'll just be like, that's why I've got my beard. Like you said, fruity. Yeah, I've got mine. That's oh, it's almost um, completely filled. You knew one. Yeah, and I've I haven't got, even been good I'm at on, like, keeping up with it. I think I'm <laughs> on volume 12 of my notebook. This is, this is a good episode for another day, I think. Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah, we should definitely this. do beer journaling. If you want to hear about our beer journaling and beer reviews, let us know, and we'll oh, do it. Including the shit ones, like the embarrassing yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> like I will like, show you the first. Like, I can't. I, I was this looking is back. Like, cause light. <laughs> Seriously, I never do that. I've no. never done cause no. light. I, like, I no, but yeah, I've definitely checked it in because I tried it because I wanted. The I've definitely checked in like Corona <laughs> and stuff yeah. like that because like I've drunk it. I'm, I'm like, having that number. Ooh, I've checked. I want to get up to that. What, like, I think, you know, what is it? 10,000 elite? Oh, yeah, I have definitely I rated the crap beers. Though. I have definitely <laughs> rated macro beers higher than they should have rated because at the time I was probably off my face and I was like, <laughs> I'm checking it in. Woo. I don't think I've done that. But I think, I, it, like, if I'm not sure, I just don't put a rating at all. To be fair, this <laughs> was like before I really took the, the, the yeah. untapped seriously. It was just like, I'm just putting things in untapped. But that's a whole separate episode. Like untapped embarrassing is a whole, se- untapped or embarrassing. Is a whole separate episode as well. <laughs> yeah, whole separate episode. Embarrassing truths and untapped. Clickbait. <laughs> badge getting on the badge, How to hunt badge wankers. <laughs> badge wanking. <laughs> badge wanking. That's what it's stamp. Oh, Move over stamp wanking. Yeah, we're badge wanking. Badge wank. <laughs> yeah. I can't beat Anyways. that out now. That's there. <laughs> back, to, back to the broken anyway. dream. So, so we've got the broken, the the traditional broken dream yep. it's on the video. If you're if you're looking at the video with this lovely mocha y beige tannish coloured label with the siren on it and everything. It's yep. nice breakfast out. That's a cheeky little. Well, it's not a cheeky little. It's a cheeky little can about three thirty mil compared to what you normally get nowadays. Six point five percent. Six point five percent though. Yeah surprising yeah um and we thought why stop with there let's have some of the variations so we've also got shattered dream nitro do you know i've not had this yet have you not i was no. gonna say i i was like did we do this one or was it something mm-hmm. else we did i think it was a different one we did 9.6 percent oh i've got to be up in the morning yeah me too 8 45 <laughs> haircut Ooh, woohoo oh. So be prepared for the next one, which is rum and maplewood broken dream. So these are oh the goodness. twisted maple broken dreams. I've had the Definitely. cherry one. That was quite nice. Twisted breakfast out. 6.5% actually. So really the highest oh, ABV yeah. one is the shattered dream. Um, but that I reckon the best way to go about this yep. is to go broken dream, then go shattered dream, because that's going to be... Yep more or less the impy version of this so direct direct comparison and then we'll venture over to the rum and maple wood yep. what's your thoughts on that yeah that's what i was planning on doing so i think on those that's ones good. i've got a few yep. extras myself so I, I think we've covered it all sort of in our stouts episode we've got um when we did it we said there's kind of there's a lot of variations of broken dream like i couldn't just give you a number because there's i think it was like high 20s or like low 30s or something was how many it looked like variations to one degree or another even if it was an impy version here or you know whatever um on untapped a broken dream um i've not obviously had like a chunk of them but i've had I started getting more of the later releases of them from this past year so i sort of amassed them because i wanted to have them all together so the ones that i've still got left i've got cacao and hazelnut broken dreams that's one of the twisted Ooh, broken dreams that so that's nice. six love hazelnut so i was mm. like cacao and hazelnut yes living for that um and then the other one which came out in morrison's which i think we may or may not have discussed in the supermarket episode um that was cacao and cherry broken dream twisted breakfast and i've only had that because you sent me a uh, sent me a, one of it. And I've you really never wanted been able it. To, I really wanted it because I love a bit of cherry and a beer, and I've never been able to get it in my Morrison's. Yeah, rubbish. For some reason, you can't. But I, I mean, I can get them at the tap yard for you when you yeah. want them. Or yeah. my the Morrison's near my work, so it's fine. But yeah, six siren mule. You yeah, can get me wherever mule. I want. <laughs> yeah, I can go and buy you whatever you want <laughs> on <laughs> yeah. the on the not black yes. market. Yes, on the, on the not black like the real market it's the real just when, the siren shop <laughs> when you say the siren mule, people yeah. are going to be like where is she getting this she getting it she like, the I'm, siren I'm, shop just I'm like going to the tap yard and I'm buying it like that's, that's, a, secret. <laughs> yeah. that's a secret there's no secret she's just buying it she's just closer closer to it than I am <laughs> yeah so that's how you get the batilias I'll get you yep. the siren that's all good so we've Perfect got balance. um time you get time and tide for me yeah um 
yeah, so the cacao and hazelnuts are 6.5 and the cacao and cherry is a 7.4. So I have actually done a comparison of buying the Morrison's and buying the one direct from the tap yard just to see if there was any difference in flavor. Like was I didn't know if it was brewed in the same. So I did it blind, like completely blind. Yeah. And it was it was pretty much the same. So I, mm. I'm guessing that it genuinely was just all brewed in the same yeah. batch. So, but I just thought it was, I, I knew that was probably the case, but I thought it'd be quite interesting as an, I did that one and I did uh, the IPA that they did with salt. I forget what it was called now. One through three. It was salt and another one. It was called one through three, I think. I did like blind okay. tastings, though, side by yeah. side. One from the supermarket and one from um, the actual tap yard. And yeah. I tried to guess in advance which one would taste a certain way and if they would taste different at all. And, and then I tasted them and thought, oh, here, here's how I think they sit. And I think for the most part, this one actually did just taste flat out the same. So I yeah. think same batch brewed in the same place. But Because that's the argument experiment. sometimes, isn't it, that it's lesser quality because it's in a supermarket yeah ex- exactly Not so that's that's kind case. of that's kind of the experiment that i wanted to do was like but is it like does it taste yeah. the same or you know for the same for a similar price point at the both like yeah. you know what, what is it like so i thought that was pretty fun so i'm thirsty now we both have to get up in the morning yeah shall we crack and get on with it um, so I, while we're cracking it, I'll say, so if you want to know more about stouts, do go back to our stouts episode because we go in depth, we do a deep dive on the style. Um, this is a breakfast stout. We did talk about breakfast stouts in our triannuary episode because we had the brew by numbers breakfast stout. Um, what makes it a breakfast stout is usually it's got coffee, um, oats. It might have something like maple in it. So it's going to have like breakfast flavors. Um, I mean, you can drink it at breakfast if you want. <laughs> I won't judge you. I think to be fair, I know I've not had a breakfast out, but I've definitely had um, Fierce's, their coffee, their uh, Eskimo, Eskimo Joe. Joe. I've had their, I had their Eskimo Joe once um, breakfast. at breakfast. Yeah, good like, job. Um, my husband and I were like, we're going to have brunch on a weekend. And I was like, let's crack this open, That's crack fun. this bad boy open. And we did have like 11, nice. 10, 11 o'clock brunch and had an Eskimo Joe. And it was like... I was like, oh, I feel naughty. <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be having a beer at 10 on a Saturday. <laughs> I mean, Very, um, there's a lot of coffee on it, on the nose. I get a bit of smokiness as well. Don't get that in mind. I just get a lot of chocolate and roasty. Like um, when you get the the coffee beans, like the espresso beans that are more chocolatey, that's yep. kind of like for me what this smells like. It has the element of the chocolate coffee. I'm getting coffee and a bit of smoky tobacco. Get this a sweet chocolate. And to be fair, mine's been out for probably just over an hour. Yeah, mine too, I think. I really want to go have it on um on cask. I almost had it on cask at the pub that I was at last yeah. week at Nags Head. Um, but I was like, because it's so easy for me to get this one. I don't want to get this one because it's too easy for me to get again. That's delicious. Lots of chocolate, bit of bitter coffee. I get more smokiness in the taste yeah. than I did on the nose. Um, and I get a bit of nuttiness in it as well. Am yeah. I? Not a yeah. lot, but just sort of towards the back end of it. There's this tiny bit of nuttiness that comes through. But I think I tend to pick up nutty notes a lot stronger than maybe other people do. Yeah, so I find do. that I always manage to find the nutty elements and things, but then yeah. I also really love nuts. So maybe that's. I'm just comparing it to what I said back in 2014. <laughs> so can you read that out again? Um, I do love. Well, a I have a. I do love a breakfast stout! Exclamation mark. Uh, roasty chocolate and coffee with an alcohol warmth. Delicious. I wouldn't say alcohol. I wouldn't say alcohol there. warmth. <laughs> Does that show how our tolerance has grown you over the years? Booze bag, you. Right. <laughs> the five was it? It's what do you say? Six point five. Six point five percent only. It's, it's but, really like, funny. Right, so in two thousand and fourteen, I was probably drinking more real ales, so this was probably quite boozy for me back then. It is genuinely really funny that. Uh, I, I just find it funny the amount of times that when we sort of talk about beers and we go, it's only six point five percent some people like if you speak to my manager at work like he will be like 6.5 percent. like he saw my um s43 snickers one 
and I sent him a picture of it and I think I sent him a picture of hey you guys when I got it as well because yeah. he dressed up as sloth for Halloween one year and I was like he will love this and I sent it and he he looked at them and it was like something like 11 or 12 percent alcohol yeah was one of them That's I don't remember one. which one and he was ever since he's like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't all drink 12 percent beers. And I was like, do you think that that's what I drink normally? Right. <laughs> he took the piss out of me. To- I was in the office today and he took the piss out of me today because he was like, oh, you and your craft beers and your 17 quid for a third of a pint. And I was like, that's not at all. That's what- not accurate. <laughs> that's not what that's I drink. <laughs> and I tried to pull up the place that was in where, where I work. There's a craft beer place that I've never been to. And I said, for my leave and drinks, I want to go there. And yeah. Tried to pull it up because I'm going to force them. I was like, I'm going to force you to have like decent beer. To be fair, I you we also work. We we also work near Rebellion Brewery, which is real L, but it's, it is really. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I pulled, I pulled up the list and it comes up on untapped. And I was like, annoyingly, I can't prove you wrong because I can't see the prices. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but just know that it's not 17 quid for a third of a pint. I'll tell you that. Mm-mm. It's not London. I mean, it is Marlowe. It might be more expensive, but it's not London prices. I wonder if the smokiness is what I was getting as the alcohol hmm. back then before I developed my palate say that but I mean I guess it depends on because it could have been at the time like if you I mean maybe yeah maybe normally depending on drinking, drinking 6.5 percent then then it could have been a business because I wouldn't think about the smokiness in this is unless you were having it maybe at a different temperature as well and there was a bit at play with that or maybe it was a bit stronger or if you were having it fresh maybe that changes it a bit I, Who knows? I don't know <laughs> it could have been anything just maybe a smokier batch than this one I mean, it was seven years ago, so who knows? <laughs> I'm surprised you don't remember spot on. Right? I should know exactly it, shouldn't I? You should know the batch number I and should. everything. Right. Oh, it goes down too easy. It's really it smooth. Does. It's it's thinner, but I wouldn't say that the thinner mouthfeel was like... Cause that I, doesn't bother me. I think the thing is, when people describe stouts as being thin in terms of mouthfeel, like a lot of people have just come to associate stouts with has to be like thick has to be creamy yeah. has to be like really really full like and i don't think that's the case. Sta- like really big imperial stouts or they're full of lactose or blah blah i mean this has got lactose in it um, yeah. which i think does add to the mouthfeel but i i've never been concerned by what people refer to as oh it's a thin stout like some of them are <laughs> I just I, I think that yeah, I think I it's, a, it's a trend guilty. that people I feel are... guilty describing it as thin because then I think I always feel like I have to qualify it by saying yeah. it's thin but it's not bad because yeah. it's thin like I don't mean that in an offensive way I mean yeah. that in a it's a thinner mouthfeel but it's still yeah. full of flavor yeah. and it's smooth and it's it's enjoyable but I think it's I think as well it's it's what's currently popular in stouts like um there was this story that I heard about a guy who was from one part of America and he went to another part of America and he, he ordered an IPA and he got given a West Coast and he drank it and was like, ah, this isn't an IPA. Like, it's way too bitter. And they're like, no, that is an IPA. Because he was totally used to, like, New England juice bombs. And then he was he just asked for an IPA, so they stuck a West Coast in front of him and he was like, this isn't an IPA. So it's, it's that, it's, it's what you're used to and what you expect from things and... It's all about learning your beer styles and knowing what to expect in your glass so you're not disappointed. It's really funny you say that because I was on uh, months ago, I got into an argument on Reddit, as you do when you're on Reddit. <laughs> and um, and and somebody had posted something in like the craft beer subreddit, like the overall one, which is mainly Americans, which that's why it's really frustrating because there's like a subreddit for craft beer UK, but it doesn't really get used. It was locked yeah. for a while. So I think people just learn to like not bother posting there. It's unlocked now, but still no one really posts there. So a lot of it's like the US market. And somebody had posted something like got this double IPA and like it's it's garbage or something like that. And it's just basically saying it wasn't good or you know did I should have known by how it looked it wasn't good or something like that and they posted a photo and they were just saying that it was just too boozy and everything else like that and it looked really hazy and I was like for what we're used to for a double IPA I struggle to think of a clear double IPA that I've ever had all the dippers that are the majority of the dippers that I've had have always been really like juicy looking like like chicken broth type 
chicken stock yeah because they're kind of highly hopped, hopped really so, hazy yeah. and really you know not quite tipper level booziness but yeah. depending on them you can get that level of boozy like quite a high level of booziness from it because obviously it's a higher abv ipa um and i think i commented something like but are you sure that like like there doesn't seem like there's any because he just said oh it just didn't taste right but like he didn't explain the taste he didn't say anything about it he just said it's not like obviously it was wrong because of how it looked alone and the taste was just like wrong and I was like well what about the taste he's like it was just basically like pure alcohol and I was just like but maybe it was just not what you're expecting if you're not used to drinking that and he was like it was really expensive too and I was like it's also a double it's gonna be more yeah. expensive and he was just like unwilling and he was like not and he it turned out he was from the reason it made me think of this is he was from the west coast yeah and i didn't really think about the fact that for him he was like no double ipas that i know of are all very piney they're clear they're you know it doesn't yeah. have that same nature to it and i'm like okay that makes more sense now why this didn't meet your expectation because they're in California making what doesn't appear to be and doesn't sound like from his description a West Coast style. Yeah. And so he's just probably not used to it. And yeah. I was just like, oh, for God's sake. But then it brings us back to what we always talk about, about people's expectation versus yeah. what they get. And then they complain when it's something that they don't like, but it's not necessarily wrong it's just that it's not to their taste but that's what made me think of when you when you said that so I just took us on a tangent just to say I got in a fight on reddit should we, should we? so I've got my nitro glass for my I nitro as well. that that you gave me quite kindly should you had an extra one should we do should we do an impressive pour I'll try yeah. to do an impressive pour all right hang on hope I don't close my laptop I'm probably now. gonna make a mess now I I am as well and I don't even have kitchen roll all right listen oh I've only got a little bit hang on I'm ahead. just gonna let it happen. Right, here we go. Right, if, if there's a spillage in the village, <laughs> Kimberly, <laughs> we'll try not to make a spillage in the village. Right, I want that really satisfying sound to get through to our listeners. Okay, right. Oh, that wasn't as satisfying. I'm sad. Too high. Too high. Too high. <laughs> Mine's gonna go everywhere. Ugh. Really, it really high. <laughs> You've got to let it sort of settle a bit and then do a bit more. All right, so it is doing that lovely settling. I've got a massive head. This was like a like a um. I, I'd, I think mine smoker. was mine was too aggressive because I did a really high pour and then all of a sudden it started being like. <laughs> oh no! Don't too overly aggressively pour your <laughs> sirens, your nitros. Let's top it up a bit. Yeah. To be fair, I do have that gorgeous. Uh, it's got a lovely creamy head on layering. it. It's very it's um, a bit, um. It's very um. Uh, Guinnessy <laughs> in the in the way that the layers like land. Yeah. My uh, it's it's quite red in color, I and I can, really all, see. I can I can barely make it out around yeah, the bottom. I can see red. But it's definitely... I can see red. <laughs> Very lovely, creamy, thick head on that. It's a um, lovely beige colour. I'm going to keep topping it up a little bit. I'm getting coffee. Yeah, I, lo- I just love, like, the way the head on nitros. It's just so smooth. It's so... Like, there's nothing more satisfying than, than like, everyone can say what they want about Brewdog. Like, ha- have a go however you want. But roaster coaster, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing the, the head on the roaster coaster settle. And then you can, like, do whatever you want to it. You can be, like, doing this all around with it, and it just doesn't move. And it's... Like, right. I don't want to drink it because I'm like, I don't yeah. want to disturb it. It's taking a nap. I don't want to bother it. I'm getting really lovely, nutty, roasty. <laughs> you got to have your nose. Yeah. Nutty, roasty coffee. What I'll say about this Stop one, it. that's very different to all the other nitros that we've kind of done the side-by-side compact. Like, Because I think there was quite a few of the siren where they did the normal and the nitro and we sort of did them side-by-side. Yes. Um, and I've always found that when they do the nitro, it sort of almost mutes the taste and sometimes the smell, like you can't get the smell that good. But with this, I'm picking it up pretty clearly. There's no, 
I'm not finding any issue there of like it being blocked out or muted or dulled in any type of way. Oh, that's gorgeous. <sighs> so that's chocolatey. Nice. It's it's got like a nice bit of um so while the original is a little bit more bittersweet, this is a bit more on the milk chocolate area for me. It's a little bit more sweeter as opposed to bitter. Yeah, I get more nuttiness from this one than I do the other one. For me. Surprisingly, I don't. I get more malty. Like, I'm getting a bit more maltiness in this, I think. Okay. Not heavily, just you can tell sort of the aftertaste is a little bit more malty. That's just tasty. It is really good. Like For if, a, you're a, if you're a stout person. You can't even say only 9.6%. It doesn't to taste be fair, 9.6 is pretty, yeah, aggressive. It does not taste 9.6. It's well not 9.6. It is 9.6. Mine's 6.5. Have we got different ones? Do we? Which one do you have? I've got a hard port. I've you got hard port. port. I've got the hard port broken dream. Oh, I opened the shattered. <laughs> <laughs> we have got different ones. Yeah, I've got different ones. That's I right. think I might have finished my hard port, to be fair. <laughs> well, you've got shattered, so now you get to hear about both. That's why we're tasting them there differently. Yeah, that's why, that's why this is different. The prop the mistake is the cans look very similar. Look very similar. Have you I sent me a I, shattered? I don't know. Did I send you a shattered? Maybe not. Maybe maybe I haven't even got one. You should do. I don't know. I'll get, get you one somewhere. <laughs> I'll get you one if they still have them. I'm not sure if they do. I think I don't think they do actually. So it's all right. This one's quite delicious. This is this one? I was what do you say? Like, yeah, mine's six point five. I was like, mine is nine point six. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, it's probably better for me since I'm going to be lighting fires with children tomorrow. I'm just going to be sitting getting a head massage at the hairdresser. <laughs> so it's like late it's on right me. for some. Um, right. Well, I, I mean, I like both of those for different reasons. Yes, agree. Um. I like. I mean, I like the breakfast one because it's just a really good example of a breakfast stout. Um, and I like this I one because it's a widget, but there's not. I don't think not a widget. Um, I like this one because it's just really satisfying. Mine's very boozy. I mean, I'm a stout person, so this is like that's just a glass of happiness. <laughs> I'll have to if if I can if I have another one of these, I'll send you one of these because um, it's really good. <laughs> It's really good. Very boozy. All right, I'm reading the back of the rum and maple wood broken dream. Um, it's an indulgence of chocolate and specialty malts. That's what they've got on all of the broken dream cans. Um, I love this word. Um, broken dream is smooth and unctuous. Unctuous. It's such such a, a good word. word. It? It's such a good word for stouts. Unctuous and Moorish. Brewed with milk sugar for balance of mouthfeel. As a special one-off, we've taken a step further here, Oof. spinning the beer on maple wood. What's what's? Uh, I'll be interesting to know what's spinning the beer on maple. I guess so, that's in the whirlpool. Uh, it's going to be probably in their spin bot. Oh, what's that? Uh, I can't explain to you what the spin bot is. It's just <laughs> the spin bot. <laughs> I can't, like you've put me on the spot. When do I they? Don't know. Do you know when they use it? Like, do they use it? With, after after they well, like while they're cooling the beer or after it's fermented let me give it a google I'm, give you, I'm asking you questions because you're the the siren super fan so you should know <laughs> yeah that's me <laughs> these are questions we should have asked matt really uh, that wasn't what we were talking to him about no. so i wouldn't have even thought to be fair siren have covered extensively um what their spin boy is like they they have, have they? done bits and bobs on the spin bot when they've done like different tastings and stuff. Mm. Um, so let me see. I'll give you the summary. Hop, saturating, adjunct, spinning, flavor, maxing, piece of engineering. Um, I can't really show you the picture, can I? But uh, after our first Caribbean chocolate cake brew in 2014, we began thinking about where to go next. Uh, 
we knew from drinking some of Cigar City Brewing offerings at the time that we could be that we that more could be achieved with the ingredients that we were using. We also knew that our processes for the first recipe would put a big strain on the brew if we ever wanted to scale up. Uh, so basically, they, it looks like they spoke to Cigar City, Cigar City, mm. Jay Lesher, who developed the Spinbot Five Thousand. Ooh, it's a fun name. Yeah, the Spinbot 5000 is a really fun name. I like when they talk about it because it sounds very futuristic. It does. I think that they tend to do it a lot with like the wood stuff. And I don't know if it's specifically exclusively for wood or not, but I know that they do it for like all the ones that they have. Yeah, so this is spinning the beer on maple wood. So I... I'm going to have to look this up now because the beer... Yeah, I'll send you the link. To know. Yes, please. And like, we'll put it in the show notes for anybody else that wants to be a geek out with me. <laughs> you can cut me um, reading out yeah. that and just, just put this part in. But yeah, I mean, the photo, if you open the link that I've just sent you and you scroll down, there's like a photo of all the... It's really like interesting looking at all the wood that's like these like like twirly pieces of wood and it's inside this piece of metal. And then I guess they put the beer in there and spin it cool i'd be interested to know whether it's as it's cooling like whirlpool style or whether it's like secondary like after primary fermentations happened like at what point they do that i'd be really interested i think there's because some videos. i'm a big geek <laughs> oh I videos some, i think there's videos so I'll, I'll try to find one of the videos yes, that they've done because they've definitely done a tour of it um in one of their tastings they've gone here's the spin bot so i'll try well, listeners if you'd like to know get hold of us and we'll f- and we'll find out what it is and we'll tell you some more info because we did not prepare enough for this episode <laughs> i just thought we were drinking and then all I of a sudden the joanne's questions. and then yeah, all of a sudden I'm joanne's gone what's what's the the spin bot? and what's i'm like i actually bot? know what this sp- i know that is the spin bot 5000 i know it was made for all the beers that they've done like the wood stuff with (laughs) yeah and I vaguely watched it in the tastings when they've gone over it but when you put me on the spot I'm like I can't think of what it does because I don't think I've heard them talk about it but that's because I haven't do you know what I might have to revoke your siren queen crown I go to all the tastings mate don't so no I don't it's true I mean I'm wearing the hoodie yeah Oh, damn. Anyway, we can look into that further. Let us know if you want to know more about the spin bot, just like I do. <laughs> Maybe that's it. We need to talk to them about We need yeah. to get them back on. Okay, we need to get Matt back on, and he needs to give us the lowdown on Matt, the Matt, please, bot. talk to us about the spin bot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, should we drink this beer? Yeah. Um, so it's, it, they spin it on maple wood. That's where we got stuck last time, Ooh. along with our very own rum barrel aged coffee. Ooh. Developed in collaboration with Quarterhouse. Smell it from the can. Okay. It smells like another beer, a specific beer. Can you name what other specific beer this smells like? From the can, specifically. No. It smells very similar to the Affogato ice cream. Oh. To me, it does anyways. Okay. Because it smells coffee- a bit smokier to me. Oh, see, I'm not oh, getting that. I'm getting color. a little bit of smoke, but I'm getting that um, coffee crystal okay, type yeah. smell. This time we do actually have the same beer, I promise you. Yes, we do. This stuff. The same. I don't know how we managed to do that. I do, because we're just... <laughs> we're, we're donuts. Um, This is very dark brown. It's an interesting on my smell. It smells okay. like tobacco. The head look, yeah, it does. The head looks a bit velvety on mine. Yeah. Yeah. Tobacco is a good shout. It is very like, I don't want to say leafy because that's not what No, I it mean, does. Yeah, you no, know. absolutely. It does. It smells like leafy tobacco. Do you know what? My granddad used to use like pouch tobacco and rollies. And this smells like my granddad rolling a cigarette. <laughs> It's this is exactly what it smells like. It smells like my granddad rolling the cigarette. It has that effect that, like you saying that, it has that effect as well. Like the aftertaste of, like when you kind of swirl it around your mouth, swallow it, and then breathe out. It has and then that I get the rum. smoky. It has that smoky element of like if you've if you've ever smoked cigarettes or something like that. And I don't mean it in I don't mean the negative sense of like it's ashy or whatever, but it's that smoky element of the the breathe out 
part of the sip where it's not there for me in the sip as a whole but when I breathe out I'm like yeah there it is right I'm gonna do my retro nasal here we go I forgot what I was supposed to do hold your nose right yeah I get a lot of smokiness I do get tobacco then but it's really smooth and there's a bit of rum and there's a bit of chocolate oh I think I did it right again I think you did um the chocolate element of it is definitely is definitely stronger when i've used your technique just there yeah i don't think you pick it up just drinking it but when it when your retro nasal action picks it up it's because it's very subtle you get it then i think it actually dims the smokiness a bit yeah I would and it brings that. out the sweeter elements of it it's really interesting. I don't get it's like maple, a pool, but, no, but it's, it's not maple. maple wood. It's maple wood. So, but I think I think if you read rum and maple, you're going to expect maple syrup, and it's not. It's maple wood, and that's the difference. And I think yeah. you know there is a bit of woodiness to it. And the different woods do like different things. Like I really some, like some woods will so give use vanilla. Wood. Like, and that's mm. it. Is some of the ones they don't they've used wood, and it gives it like a vanilla type taste or a smoke. Okay. Like, it's not just smoky. Like when you think wood, you think like woody, smoky. But that's not the only thing that wood does. And I think that would be really interesting to explore woody beers more and yeah. and the flavors that wood can bring to it. Because I think I tried one of theirs, and might have even been one of the Caribbean chocolate cakes. The white chocolate um, one had cedar wood in it. Maybe that's, I don't know, it's one of theirs and I was expecting it to be really smoky because I was like, it is, it's got this wood in it and, and everything um, and it just wasn't. And then when I did the tasting with them, they were like, oh, you should be tasting, you know, vanilla from this or, or this element from this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I'm getting. And they're like, that's the wood. And I was like, oh. So when you're aging beer in wood, or like some aging beer and wood, but also I would assume this works probably the same with the spin bot. Maybe that um, increases the contact with the with the beer to the wood, and so that that speeds up that process possibly. Um, I'm so annoyed because I've I've heard them talk about the spin bot so many times, and I not, like at the time I did not anticipate that I was going to ask you this question. For goodness' sake, no, because I didn't read the back before. I just I didn't expect you to ask about that. And what annoys me is I've listened every single time, but for some reason I can't remember it now. <laughs> so when say. beer is in a wooden barrel, and I'm going to assume this is a similar similar concept when they're soaking wood chips wood with shavings in it or spinning it on it um it will absorb some of the various chemical compounds that are present in the wood lactones they're going to give you floral aromas and flavors and sometimes coconut uh, phenolic aldehydes that's the vanilla um, and simple sugars which will give you caramel and so it depends on the type of wood as to which of those you get and the intensity of those i think fun fact the first time that I heard about the vanilla one. Uh, that, phenolic aldehydes. Yeah, I think the first time I heard that, I thought someone said like formaldehyde. And I was like, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. You shouldn't be drinking that. Because <laughs> I think I was sort of like just listening to it in the background or something. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, that's, you don't drink that. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. I do I do love like seeing people play with wood in their beers. Do you know what? I have thought about getting some wood chips and doing a beer on some wood chips. I mean Because then you can smoke meat with it after as well. You could have like Well, I was gonna get because Wild Beer Co. were giving away bags of bags of chips. You could also buy bits of their wood, I think. They were selling staves from the barrels. Yeah. 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 I remember that and they were like you can use it for smoking meat and I was like that would be quite good but yeah I think um I almost bought one of the <laughs> I almost bought one of the siren barrels because they were selling yeah. them I think for yeah, like yeah, 50 I remember. quid and I, I was like I really want one to use as like an outdoor as a table bar or table something. yeah yeah I was like I'd really like to use it as an outdoor bar table or so- something like that um but I was just like at the time when they posted it I was like payday is too right. close but far enough away that I was like, I can't just, because they also don't take for anyone that like 
hasn't purchased from them, they take like normal cards. Like they don't take Amex. So it's not like I could put it, my credit card is an Amex. So it's not like I could put it on weird my Amex American. card. <laughs> I have a proper I was like, credit card for goodness like, sake. Oh, I was like, if they would just take Amex, like I would 100% buy it because then I'd future me would worry about paying that 50 quid. But the, the, current me that needed my paycheck to come before I could spend 50 quid on a barrel (laughs) because then you also had to go pick it up as well yeah so I was like I then have to convince Rick to help me go and pick up this barrel and then I'd have to tell him I bought the barrel right then you gotta explain why you've bought a barrel and then I have to justify why I've bought the barrel because his reaction to I bought a barrel it's not even about the money it would be about the where are you going to put the barrel? And I go, in the garden. And then he'd go, why? What are you going to do with it? And then I go, it's just, just a table. Just a table. And then he's going to go, great. Who's going to make that table? Are you going to make that table? And I'd be like, well, yeah, I do. You're gonna... no, I'm going to make that table, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll project manage the table. <laughs> project manage. I love it. I love it. But um, it doesn't work when he's also a project manager. <laughs> no. Hashtag. Beer geek problems. Hashtag craft beer girl problems. I can hide certain things. We share the, as, as Joanne found out in a separate episode, I use his Amazon account, so I can only hide so many things. <laughs> that was hilarious. Like, you can't hide things if you're using his Amazon account. Come on. Be sensible It's a joint here. Amazon account. But... So is ours. I, I don't put things on there that I want. I don't want him to know about. I I could, but I didn't want to pay shipping for a light box. Right, I didn't even he, know how it was going to be. Yeah, Gordon's got the prime. Yeah, <laughs> it's Christmas presents. Separate Amazon account. <laughs> no, I order them and I go. You are not allowed to look at what's being delivered. <laughs> I do. I do a um. I do the sign up for a free membership of Prime for a month, and then you get the free Prime, and then I promptly Genius. cancel it after Christmas Genius. is ended. But that's not the point. The point is, top tips. I couldn't hide that barrel purchase. So no, you couldn't like hide it. a barrel. <laughs> and if it was like, if it was really cheap, like I'd, it's pick your battles, like isn't it? If it was quid. like, if it was like 20, 30 quid, yeah. like I would be like collecting it myself, loading it in myself. And I probably could have loaded it in myself. But I know that if there was any scratches on the car from me trying to hoist it in, like my husband would murder me because he's a car person. So I was like, it's just that expensive enough <laughs> that it's too expensive for me to buy this barrel. So sad times. I don't have the siren barrel aged oh, barrel as a table in my sad. garden. Moral of the story. Don't try to hide things from your husband. <laughs> or yeah, I or do. To be, or, yeah, you do you. To be fair, I feel like that's gonna give me like such this bad reputation. Like I don't hide things from him. He knows all my because I'm such a bad liar. I'll buy you something. Tried to hide your photo box. <laughs> purchase i'm gonna out you on that one that's because i wasn't sure if i wanted the light box <laughs> i thought i'll give it a go <laughs> then i'll tell him. but normally i feel really guilty like i'll buy beer and i'll be like i don't have like he doesn't ask to know and i don't you know i'm not like hi i just want to tell you i bought these beers <laughs> but normally i'm like i'm being really good and he knows that when i say i'm being really good and i'm not buying beer i'm probably gonna at least buy siren and elusive like weekly and if there's something else that's really good i'm probably gonna buy that um but i feel so guilty and i'll be like i am um, i bought you're gonna see some beer showing up but it's for the podcast <laughs> blame it on me i do that too <laughs> actually do you know what he is uh, like <laughs> He, the husband, the hubs, has said, he's like, you've been really good this month. There's not been that many beer orders. I was like, that's because the fridge is full and I can't fit any more in. Wait till we come back from London. <laughs> oh, mate, don't. <laughs> then you I'm can bring in a bag. It, like, make sure you've got a bottle bag in, in your in your bag. Oh, definitely. Like, I've, oh, yeah. Packing heat. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back with a huge, like, one of <laughs> those... Um, Cat, like the camping ones where people have like the, the backpacking bags. It's bigger than they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be me. And I'll be like, I'm just getting it's beers. Full of beers. It's not beers, I promise. <laughs> it's oh, other things. Yeah. Uh, Even is. <laughs> All right. Which of these is your favorite? Ooh. Let me have the run through again, quick. Hang yeah, on. quick. Okay. Normal. Hang on. Speed run. Normal. Uh, super booze. Mine's just regular nitro. 
Um, it's really difficult because I like them all in different ways. Yes. So this one, and obviously you're, you didn't have shatter dream. No. <laughs> you had hard, poor, broken dream. <laughs> um, like the shatter dream, for example, really liked it in a very full, very like heavy flavors, very like in your face flavors, like yeah. bold, bold flavors is what I'd say. Coffee, chocolate, really good, but could be a bit heavy. So I'd have to kind of be in the right mood for it. Yeah. But it's really good. The rum and maple, really good, but in a, just a bit of a different way. I think the, the woodiness lands it in a bit of a different way. So that's really good, but in a different way. And then I think the normal broken dream is just that one I could have any time. So maybe it would kind of go like that one because that's the one that I could drink whenever. Then the shattered dream, then the rum and maple maybe. I don't know, it's really Ooh. difficult. They're all quite controversial. They're all quite much of a much. I, I really like them all. When I say much of a muchness, I mean in the sense of they're all really good. How so. much you like them, yeah, as opposed yes. to like taste <laughs> As opposed to just like, eh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, all the same. Um, I'm going to go the other way. Oh. I'm gonna go. I re- I'm really enjoying this rum and maple wood broken dream. I picked this one out. I saw it and I was like, Joanne needs to have this yeah. because I was like, you I right. really think you'll like it. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying this one a lot. And then I'm gonna go regular because I think, like, I think if I'm in a bar and there's not a lot on, but they've got a broken dream, I'm gonna be like, Yup, I'm having that. Um, the hard pour is nice because you know a, a, a stout's good on nitro. But it's a touch simple. Like when I've got that, I, don't, I, I mean, that's no disrespect. It's still an excellent beer. Um, I still really enjoy it. But this is like, you know, we're splitting hairs here. You're holding you know, a gun to my head and I'm going to go give me the <laughs> rum and maple over the hard pour. Um, just because I like the complexity of it. And that, like the smokiness. And it, I think it's the memory as well. Like, I don't like smoking. I don't particularly enjoy the smell of tobacco, but this is bringing back memories of being at my granddad's house. And I, that's an amazing thing about beer, that it brings these memories back to you, like the smells and the experience of it brings you I back I think we memories. talk about that all the time, yeah. isn't it? It's like when you drink a beer, sometimes it yeah. is impacted by the memory you have of it. Like yeah. either the memory you have of drinking it or the memory that it evokes within yeah. you when you drink it and so sometimes I think that can impact like how much you enjoy something and you might just say this isn't the best beer I've ever had but the memories that it gives me or when I was drinking it or the, the memory, feeling like that the, it gives yeah you. like yeah that has bumped it up like infinite levels yeah yeah totally on board but then to be fair like it's difficult I think my feeling of the hard pour would have probably been the same as what you yeah. said when I had the hard pour I think if I was rating it against all these it would have probably been my least favorite yeah um but i think like the least like, favorite the of three amazing of the, beers. Uh, yeah exactly again i just i always feel so terrible i know you're just like really i'm gonna say this is my least favorite but out of they're like, these but i'm really ones. sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's thin but it's like not bad thin it's like like you're only gonna get like 4.5 percent like whereas this one's getting five <laughs> we need to have a whole separate episode as well on like don't feel guilty about like, things that you shouldn't feel guilty about like let's break stigmas about what things yeah. are and aren't okay yeah oh that's good i think that was a fun this was meant to be a mini so i think actually I think it went on long longer now. i think it went on longer than we anticipated yeah. it did so that's good i enjoyed it um if you would like us to compare any other beers families of beers because families of beer seem to be a thing all the time i do at the it moment the time. yeah tori loves a beer comparison she loves it just did um, tiramisu know, stouts the other day yeah. <laughs> do you know what i've got i've got bet the farm from duration and bet the farm for Marta, which Ooh. is their barrel project one i'm going to compare those two I do like a good beer comparison. So. Yeah, yeah. So beer comparison is fun. If there's anything in particular you'd like us to do, please get hold of us and let us know. Um, Tori, if people want to get hold of you and you know ask you questions about spin bots, where can they get hold of you? <laughs> um, Siren Craft Brew on Instagram. Because <laughs> 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 they can tell you way more about the Spinbot 5000. Um, but if you want to just ridicule me for the fact that I couldn't 
on the spot tell you about the Spinbot 5000 as a person that siren crown as a person that doesn't work at siren i don't work at <laughs> siren i don't exclusively drink siren beers i just they're my local they're very good beers um if you want to if you want to shame me for not knowing a spin bot 5000 you can find me on instagram at adventures underscore in underscore optimism and what about you joe someone wants to tell you what their favorite out of all these ones if they've had them Um, if you'd like to speak to me uh there's several places you can find me that's why Um, i've got to go first this time yeah yeah. um i am a woman's brew on instagram facebook and twitter um that's got the podcast logo on it so come and ask us your questions there um i'm also if you want to come and find my beer school if you'd like to learn about beer styles um you want to add to your beer vocabulary we uh have classes and things like that on there and that is love beer learning we are on facebook instagram twitter tiktok and pinterest we also have a website which is lovebeerlearning.co.uk and you can email us lovebeerlearning at gmail.com we'll pick up any requests for episodes you've got for the podcast there as well we also have a patreon i always forget to say this like if you want to support us love beer learning's got patreon like you can support us for two pound a month like add to our beer fund so that we can carry on doing this to be fair like i i we're still no pressure because we're still going to carry on doing it anyway we're going to do it whether anybody likes it or not like as long as people are listening we'll keep doing it to be fair i didn't realize that that level of patreon was set up yeah (laughs) so i've not even (laughs) surprise if you'd like to support you can be a supporter of love beer learning and a woman's brew the podcast for two pounds a month if you'd like to hear us rattling on about beers that basically just pays for like equipment booze yeah (laughs) all that trips trips to record together (laughs) coming soon spoiler (laughs) well with that note happy joanne Cheers. Cheers.